Hey guys, this is Miko here. I'm back with another video. This is going to be a, a video about New World Fundamentals and the kind of basics of combat that apply to all classes. But that being said, even though it's the basics, it's usually the stuff that the best players have not mastered. And it's a difference between having under 5 deaths in a war and having 15 deaths in a war is related to your New World Fundamentals and how you play around them. So New World's just like any other game. Uh, if you want to get kills and you don't want to die, and a lot of this stuff is just about how you do that, depending on your class, you'll have certain objectives. As a healer, you're looking to heal, but the actual heal stats don't matter as much as your death stats. Like, you want to die for a little amount of deaths and try to keep people up when it is crucial. A lot of the times, the best way to tell healers apart is to look at their group statistics in terms of group deaths and see how well they could have prevented, but a lot of those also come down to VODs in terms of bruisers might be inting and healers try to heal them, but the bruisers die anyway and there's nothing that you could do about it as a healer. But that's like one example of like what how that might be related to your class as a support class or as a tank. You're looking at to maximize your assist to death ratio, which is not a thing on the actual leaderboards right now, uh, but that probably should be a thing. And if you're looking at a DPS-related class in Kill Squad, you're looking to maximize your kills-to-death ratio, which is a thing in leaderboards. And you're also looking to maximize some aspects that are like space control and pressure, but that doesn't really relate to New World Fundamentals as much. But you're really looking at it as a base point of view about this game is trying to figure out how to get kills or do things that will lead to kills and not die or prevent people from dying. And some of that is playstyle dependent. Some people like to take more risks than others. But just know that if you're planning on dying to take a risk, you need to be trading up in order for your risk to get value. So if you detonate and you kill five, that's usually worth it. But if you detonate and you get five people to half HP and then you die, that's generally not worth it. Unless your army is already there in its position to follow up, and it, then it might be worth it. But that's like sort of conditional. So that's like the, the biggest thing I think the people overcomplicate is you just want to figure out a way to get kills and not die and not dying is usually the part that people struggle with the most and a lot of how that not dying comes into play comes first from stamina management this depends on your your class and but the exact numbers of what stamina that you have will depend on your attributes if you have 150 decks you will have more dodges than the things i say on this list but if you're in light you should be able to have three dodges if you run hardy if you're in medium, you should be able to have three dodges without hardy, and if you're in heavy, you should be able to run three dodges with hardy. It is almost always worth having the three dodges, and it's also noteworthy that in medium, having hardy is sort of a detriment to an extent, because it increases the amount of time it takes to regen your stamina to full, meaning that you will be gray barred for longer, and you don't really get a good yield or a good return on your investment for the 10 extra stam. It's something that you don't really notice until you really get in the sync with how the dodge mechanics work, but it, it is noteworthy. Stamina manage, it's probably the biggest thing in terms of keeping yourself alive on top of positioning. Uh, but in terms of stamina, usually you don't want to do multiple dodges in a row. You want to space your dodges apart, and you want to use them to dodge key abilities. You can't dodge everything in this game, but if you're in light, there are times where you will just use all your stamina to try to create as much distance as possible but generally with other classes you, and even in light you're using your abilities to dodge or your stamina to dodge key burst and you're looking to eat the damage that is less consequential some people will purposely go for basic auto attacks to try to get people who are less good at stamina management to use their stamina and then they'll follow up with abilities that will just instantly kill them this is a really common tactic if you go to greatsword uh, it's very common for people to try to go for like a basic light into a heavy and then they'll be steals or dodge the, the light and then they'll get hit by the heavy and st and then from there it's like a combo in the sky ward you combo in relentless rush and greatsword is over tuned but there's a lot of stuff like that that makes it so that healers effectively kill themselves when instead they could just pop you know the great swords on you you don't want to waste your stam because if you waste your stam you might die so you just pop like oak flush and then you kind of eat some of the damage pop a regen pot and maybe play in the sacred for a little bit there's like stuff that you don't have to overcommit for until that you have multiple people on you and that's something i see a lot of people making mistakes around 
Consume management, as I'm starting to touch on, is another really big part about living. Knowing when to pop your dust, when to pop your oak for key moments to live, knowing which one to run. Generally, oak is better if you are up in a if you consistently get killed by people chasing you at the last second. Those people that are hitting you generally generally will be doing physical damage. But if you're on point and you like to just pop your your uh what do you call them? Well, either your oak or your dust, just to prevent general damage from coming through. That's a spot where dust can be a little bit more beneficial, because most of that general damage will just be in the form of elemental. But the specific damage that kills you ends up, a lot of the times, being physical damage. So that's like a decision that you have to make, but consume management is a really big part. And like When you choose to use your consumes, you only have cleanse once every 30 seconds, so you really need to make a count. And when you don't have your consumes, and you don't have your stamina, that's a spot where you need to position safely and try to get those cooldowns back. So a lot of this game comes down to how can I use my abilities and my stamina to get value and then how can when and where could I go from there and just play safe and hold that space that I just gained using my abilities that I got value with. So you wanna kinda go generally you wanna be going in. Like if I'm playing BBIG, I will say that this gate's like heavily contested. I will go into the gate, I will use my abilities and then I'll get out, and then I'll play passive again, and I'll wait until I have my abilities and my stamina before I go back to being aggro. And there's just basic stuff like that that you don't see very often. Especially uh, with melees a lot of time, they tend to get greedy. If there's a spot where you're taking like more than a 3v1, you generally don't want to be there unless you have a sacred under your feet. So, yeah. The other really big thing that's important is knowing where to position, what's a safe position. A lot of the times this is as simple as just playing in your team's sacreds. You can get baited by them, but generally playing in sacreds is really, really smart. Especially as it ties to consume management. If you pop a heal pot in your sacred, you're going to get 1.5 times the value of your normal heal pot. Which is fairly good and is a thing that I always save my major health pot for. Like my infused one. Is whenever I run over a sacred and I see I get healed from it, then I will pop my heal pot or my infused health pot in there. Just so that I get that double, like 1.5 times healing, and that's a little bit extra that will be enough to keep you alive sometimes and makes that healing much more effective. Another thing that comes up a lot is if you're heavily diseased and you are low, you generally want to pop your cleanse pot before you pop your health pots. But there are times where you have to pop your health pots in order to live long enough to pop your cleanse pot, but that's like a spot where you're probably already almost dead and you were beta air on positioning. But popping your cleanse pot before you pop your other pots is very, very good. Especially when you're heavily diseased or heavily rend. It's a very common thing on, on point where popping your cleanse pot will save you a lot more than popping an actual health pot right away. And if you don't have your cleanse pot, then you need to be playing safe. And like, if, if you're on point and there's like safe spots of point, like usually this bottom point is always heavily contested. But like these side areas are less contested. So this would be a spot that I would play sometimes if I did not have a cleanse spot. Literally the center of points is not super contested all the time, so that's another kind of safer spot to play. And then once I have my cleanse spot, I might pop it, and then I might go into the heavily contested area, do some damage, and then get out and go into those one of those safer spots. The other way that you could play things is you generally don't use your cooldowns until people come into you and have a more reactive style rather than a proactive style where you're trying to make plays. And that is specifically good for holding builds that hold space so like great sword hatchet that's a really good style igvg that can be a really good style to just hold your abilities until your uh great axe warhammer goes in and then you use them with your great axe warhammer so that they get value because if you throw your abilities out at random igvg tends to get less value than other builds like say vgbb or bbig like those builds are more just throwing out your cooldowns whenever you can versus igvg is more specifically playing with the actual bruisers in your group to get value the other thing I see a lot of people make mistakes on and is playing with tempo, which basically means if you get caught in a 1v5 and you die, that is your fault, and you should have read the army's tempo better. A lot of the times this like kind of happens at random, uh, but if you're not a bruiser, it's very easy to just play around your bruiser's tempo and figure out a way to position and like when to leave off of that like an OPR if you see bruisers back up and you're in the front as an IGBG that's generally a bad sign and you want to back up at that point or you're already a little bit late to back up 
And if you're a bruiser, that's a little bit harder to tell when to back up and when to not back up. But if your healer says that someone's on you, if your IGBG does not have abilities, if in general you don't have people around you that are on your team, that's usually a spot where you have overextended and you don't want to try to push in the space, but you want to either try to hold the space you have or back up. You can really only hold space you have with heals in this game because you'll get forced out without them. Which is why some of the strats you've seen recently of people not wanting to hold a B as a default, they'll hold on the sides of B. That's because they have, if they play in center of B, they have to be consistently be healed in order to live there. The other big thing, and the last big thing I want to talk about is playing your life up instead of trading for things, unless you are going to get enough value for it to be worth it, which is kind of vague, uh, but basically if you're not, if you're trading your life to kill five people, it's worth it. If you are trading your life to not kill five people, it's not worth it. And the other thing too is if you're trading one for one, it's only worth it if you have respawn advantage. So as de a defender in the fort, I'm a lot more willing to take risks and try to kill attackers because I know that I'll have the respawn advantage, especially when the respawn's about to pop. Uh, that's a spot where I'll look to hit my life at times so I can get the quick respawn. But if you know the respawn is longer, then that's a spot where you want to play your life a lot more. And a lot of this basically just comes down to having a respawn timer and playing around it. It's not much more complicated than that, but the biggest thing I want to emphasize is that this game is as simple as get kills, don't die, or get assists, don't die, depending on your role. If you're a healer, you just want to heal and not die, but the not dying part is the most important thing. If you can get your deaths to be under 5 deaths in a war, no matter what build you are at, you will be slotted consistently no matter what company you're in, and that it was a good sign that a player is good. Generally, players with higher deaths tend to be worse, and even if players get good stats and have high deaths, that's usually a problem. So, yep, that's all I have for this guide today. Just focus on playing your life, playing your stam, playing your when your consumes, playing near your sacreds. Basically, just play where other people on your team are, and if your team gets wiped, then just get out. And you don't need to necessarily hard commit for things. Let plays come to you. If you see stuff happen in front of you, commit on it, but you don't necessarily have to be the first one to make that play. Usually, they're in an army of 50 people. There are people that are playmakers, but you don't need 50 playmakers to win a war. It's actually detrimental to have 50, play, 50 playmakers in a war. Usually, you want 5 to 10 tops playmakers, and then you want a lot of what people usually call soldiers or people that play for... Uh, Util, they play for the win con and they follow up on what other people do and if you don't have those people that follow up on what other people do the army as itself won't function which is the reason why you see some superstar rosters not actually do as well as people would think because some people play for themselves and not on top of what others will do so yeah that's all I have for this one I'll see you guys in the next video